Welcome to the Pyromation Training Lab. In this video, we will go over the basics of resistance temperature detectors, or what are more commonly known as RTDs, a type of temperature sensor. Temperature sensors are all around us, measuring the temperature of a material, process, or area. You can find them in homogenization of milk, compressors, labs, distilleries, chemical plants, refineries, commercial freezers, and in many other applications, a common type of sensor that uses resistance or ohms to measure process temperatures is called a resistance temperature detector, or RTD. These temperature sensors are sometimes called PT100s or PT1000s, depending on the material used and its resistance at zero degrees Celsius. RTDs are used to measure process temperatures roughly between minus 200 degrees Celsius to plus 600 degrees Celsius. An RTD consists of an insulated metal element or conductor connected via lead wires that enable a current to pass through it when hooked up to a power source, like a PLC. Each type of metal will obstruct or resist, along with other variables, this flow of electricity or current passing through it slightly differently. Resistance is determined by measuring voltage with a known current and calculated by using Ohm's law. When an RTD is inserted into a process, the measure of ohms helps determine the temperature of that process. Most RTDs are made of platinum or nickel alloy wire conductors. At the atomic level, these conductors have atoms vibrating within them. When a power source is connected to the conductors, the free electrons from the electric current move through them. The conductor's atoms cause some obstruction to the current's electrons as they pass through, slowing them down. The flow of the current through the conductor is affected by the amount of current, the type of conductor material, the gauge or thickness, and the length of the conductor. Finally, increasing temperatures in the process will excite the conductor's atoms causing greater resistance, while cooler process temps cause less resistance. Accounting for all of these factors, and as long as a constant current level is maintained, the final change in resistance will cause a change in voltage per Ohm's law. The resulting voltage is used to determine the process temperature. The most common RTDs come in two basic types, thin film microchip-like sensors and wire-wound sensors. The wire-wound has two styles, miniature conductor wire coils inside board holes in a ceramic mandrel, or conductor wires wound around the ceramic mandrel and coated with glass. The conductors are typically platinum, although nickel and other metals are also used. Each metal has different resistance characteristics. These RTDs are very small in size. The thin film RTD consists of a metal-coated ceramic substrate, which has a resistance pattern cut into it. The lead wires are bonded to the substrate and held in place using a bead of epoxy or glass. This style can be more durable and robust than the wire-wound RTDs, depending on application. Wire-wound RTDs typically measure wider temperature ranges, provide higher accuracy readings, but may be less durable. The RTD conductors are connected to lead wires, typically made of copper. They are configured in one of three ways, two-wire, three-wire, or four-wire types, with three-wire being the most common. The RTD leads are then connected to a terminal block, transmitter, or directly to instrumentation equipment. Different lead wire configurations have varying levels of accuracy. Remember that the point is to get an ohm reading for the RTD conductors, like platinum, to determine a temperature. However, when those conductors are connected to lead wires, their resistance is also part of the reading. A two-wire RTD is the least accurate because it includes the resistance of the two leads. They are usually used for short distances and applications where close accuracy is not required. To get a more accurate reading, a three-wire RTD is configured using an additional lead wire. The additional wire creates a compensation loop, which is then subtracted from the reading across the RTD. 
The three-wire circuit mathematically compensates for the resistance contributed by the lead wires, allowing the RTD resistance to be calculated independently. This style assumes the resistance is the same for all three lead wires. It is the most common type of RTD construction, providing excellent accuracy at an economical cost. They can be used in many applications, but are particularly useful when long lead wire runs are required. The most accurate type is the four-wire RTD. This RTD compensates for both lead wires, such that any slight difference in the resistance of the two, such as slightly different lengths, nicks in the wire, etc., are fully accounted for. As noted earlier, different metals have different resistance to current. The resistances of different metals at various temperatures have been established and recorded, such that valid interpretations can be made. Platinum is typically used in RTDs because its change in resistance associated with a change in temperature is fairly linear, making it a reliable measurement material. As this chart illustrates, this platinum RTD shows a resistance of 100 ohms at 0 degrees Celsius. That is why it is also referred to as a PT100. This platinum RTD's linear rise in resistance related to each degree rise in temperature shows a rate of change, or slope, of 0.385 ohms per degree Celsius. This rate of change is used to derive the temperature coefficient of resistance, or alpha, and is used to identify the type of RTD. These coefficient parameters are established via international industry standards organizations. The 385 is the most commonly used RTD sensor, a higher purity platinum 100 ohm type, the 392 RTD, provides a higher level of stability, but is more expensive. These international industry standards organizations also classify 100 ohm RTDs per their accuracies and effective temperature ranges. You can see on this chart for 0.385 RTDs that one of the most accurate platinum RTDs is the 1 5th IEC Class B. R5T. At 0 degrees Celsius, it can range between plus or minus 0 0.06 degrees Celsius of an accurate reading. However, it has a limited accuracy range, and that error deviation becomes greater as the measured process temperature becomes colder or hotter. Platinum RTDs are typically made in 100 ohm or 1000 ohm constructions. The 1000 ohm RTD is available only in thin film substrates. It offers 10 times the resistance of the 100 ohm RTD, provides higher resolution, and is typically used in a two-wire configuration. Because of its greater resistance, the 1000 ohm RTD reduces the impact of the lead wire resistance in a two-wire circuit. Other RTD constructions use nickel, copper, or other materials at various resistances. There are a number of construction methods used in building complete RTD temperature sensor assemblies. Each varies according to the application in which it will be used. Building the right RTD assembly requires an understanding of the process conditions. When these questions have been answered, the best RTD for the application can be selected. Building the complete RTD assembly also depends on the application. If response time is critical, a smaller sheath diameter, smaller gauge conductors, provides faster results. Otherwise, standard size diameters typically work for most applications. Other special constructions can also be used. The recommended minimum immersion length of the RTD sensor assembly should be 10 times the sheath diameter. Once the diameter and length have been established, the temperature range generally determines the rest of the construction for the sensor assembly. Any process at or below 200 degrees Celsius 392 degrees Fahrenheit, can use a low-temp construction method, which includes a metallic sheath or tube and the welding of the RTD leads to fluoropolymer insulated lead wires. The tube is welded closed and the RTD is located at the tip of the tube. An alumina oxide powder is then packed into the tube to ensure good thermal transfer times, stability, 
and protection against vibration and mechanical shock. The open end is sealed with an epoxy to prevent moisture ingress. The tube can be bent to angles, and various fitting options can be attached to the sheath, depending on what the application calls for. Lead wire transitions or extension lead wire options can be applied from the sheath termination to the wire termination. A variety of lead wire termination options can be used. If the application calls for measuring temperatures in the mid-range between 200 degrees Celsius to 400 degrees Celsius, a similar construction can be used. However, the lead wire insulation is changed to fiberglass or polyimide, depending on the specific range. Wider temperature ranges, those between minus 200 degrees Celsius and 600 degrees Celsius, may require a different assembly construction. Instead of using a tube and wires, high temperature constructions utilize a magnesium oxide sheath, where the wire and MGO powder are already packed in the tube. This construction has great durability, covers a broader temperature range, is bendable, and better for long sheath lengths. Part of the MGO powder is removed from one end to make a space for the RTD and to expose its lead wires for welding to the sensor wire leads. The end is packed with MGO and a cap is then welded over the end for protection and stability. On the termination or transition end, once the conductors are exposed, flexible lead wires are attached. Then an epoxy seal is applied to prevent moisture ingress. Some RTD sheath or wires are terminated within an enclosure like a connection head. At this point, the wires are connected to a ceramic terminal block or temperature transmitter before proceeding to a PLC. If the process conditions are particularly rough, corrosive or under pressure, a thermowell might be used to protect the process end of a spring-loaded RTD. Once installed in the process, the RTD requires power from a source sending current through the device. The resistance or ohm measurement sometimes travels via the lead wires to a transmitter where it is converted to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal before being sent to instrumentation equipment. The resulting signal indicates the process temperature. Otherwise, the resistance measurement is sent directly to the instrumentation equipment. Wireless transmitters are also available. The benefits of using RTDs over other types of sensors is that they are very stable, provide high levels of accuracy and repeatability, maintain a linear output, and can be used across a broad range of temperatures. They are uniquely well suited for applications below zero degrees Celsius. Pyromation has the expertise and manufacturing capabilities to design and produce the right RTD for your application. As we've demonstrated, RTDs are a fairly simple instrumentation technology that provides critical temperature information in a wide range of process applications. This concludes Pyromation's training lab on RTDs. If you liked this video, please click the thumbs up button below. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the Pyromation training lab. It's free and guarantees that you won't miss the next chapter of this instructional series.